Hey guys, welcome back to part two of this haul video. We are here to do some swatching. So I'm going to start with the colour pencils and the spillow woodies in this um, it's a Sea White of Brighton sketchbook. It's like a, just a mixed media or media sketchbook. It's fairly smooth. And yeah, for some reason I'm using it upside down. But there we go. It's fairly smooth, like all purpose paper. Okay, so first up we have Holbein's Shell Pink. This is... Um, and I'll read out the sort of the product, the code number on it in case you need that. So it's Shell Pink OP019. It's a really nice sort of soft uh, beigey pink colour. Then we have Ash Rose OP076. Again, it's a really nice uh sort of blush colour almost, blush pink, uh, but slightly more muted. It's a very muted sort of mauvey pink colour. Then we have Salmon Pink, OP028. It's a bit more of like an apricot type, slightly more orange leaning pink. Then we have Carnation, which is OP031. It's a nice sort of pinkish red. Then we have Luminous Red, OP700. I just wanted to try out a Luminous pencil and I thought I'd heard good things about the Holbein one, so I wanted to try it out. I thought that'd be fun for adding like a real pop of colour at the end of a picture or something. Then we have Wine Red, OP060. Really nice, rich wine red colour. Then we have Sunflower, OP143, a nice rich warm yellow warm yellows are my favorite i definitely prefer them to cool yellows but it's a really lovely one. Oh, sorry i just realized the camera's shaking okay i'm gonna try to be a bit more gentle then we have apple green op251 apologies for the camera shake then we have cactus green op292 That didn't seem to help with the shake. I thought if I wasn't doing it on the table, maybe it wouldn't shake as much. Then we have Jasper Green, OP294. Uh, Fur Green, OP288. It's a nice dark, like pine green. Or oh, fur green. Then we have Misty Green, OP272. Followed by Ice Green. This is that sort of cobalt turquoise type colour, cobalt teal. OP228. We have Lavender Blue, which is OP328. nice sort of sky colour and we have indigo OP460 and lastly we have raisin OP486 it's a nice dark purple violet colour there we go really like the sort of colour range and yeah I'm looking forward to playing around with these a lot more okay and then on the next page we have space for the Stabilo Woody so first we have pastel yellow with pastel red it's like basically a coral type of colour Pastel pink. I'm going to wet these down and swatch them out because they are water soluble. Pastel purple. Pastel blue. Which is a nice sort of like tealy colour. Pastel green. Let's 
just grab a paintbrush and some water. Uh, actually, I'll grab this one. They're really nice and sort of buttery and dissolve quite nicely. You see how well it dissolves. It doesn't really leave a lot of lines behind. Pastel purple. It's a nice sort of lilac-y shade. Pastel blue. Again, it's quite a green leaning blue colour, which is which is nice. Which I like, but I know some people may have different preferences, which is why I'm pointing it out. And then finally the pastel green. That'll be a nice little combo to add to the more standard colors in the color in the collection that I have so so yeah and that's those Stabilo Woodies ready to get started with swatching the watercolors um, I'm swatching on 100% cotton watercolor paper this is from a really old stash of some Saunders Waterford paper so the sizing may have gone a bit funny on the edges but we're just gonna we're just gonna go with it we're gonna go with it and see how we do all right, starting with the Da Vinci colors, we're going to start with Aralide Yellow, which is PY97. It's a really lovely, bright sort of mid-yellow. Water that down a bit. I just put little blobs of the colors out on the paper before getting started. It's really lovely, bright, clean yellow. Then we have Hansa Yellow Medium. Which again, as the name suggests, is a mid yellow. It's a little bit warmer than the Aralite, but not by much. There we go. And we have Nickel Azo Yellow, which is a favourite. It's a really nice, rich, sort of mustardy colour, very earthy yellow in the mass tone. But once washed out, and I do have a colour comparison series for this colour episode, I mean video. When it's washed out, you get a really lovely, bright, transparent, warm yellow. Also great for mixing natural looking greens. Then we have Soul Shine, which is a mix of PO62 and PY97. So the Aralide Yellow we just swatched at the beginning. It's a really lovely sort of like a pumpkin-y orange, I guess. I don't go for typical, like, standard oranges like this very often, but this one's quite a nice one. Then we have New Gold, which is PY83 and PR101. This one I was really intrigued to try, see what it looks like. Reserving judgment. Okay, that's not bad. I'd say it's more orange than gold, but I do have a little splodge of the original, well, the previous version, the quinacridone gold from Da Vinci that is now being discontinued. So we can do a little comparison within the brand. Yeah, it doesn't have quite the same depth and richness to it, in my opinion, compared to the new one. The new one definitely looks more just flat orange. And it looks a bit more opaque. It comes across a bit more opaque as well. The original one had PR206, which is the pigment that's been discontinued. 
and PY150, which is that nickel azo yellow, and that gives it a really nice brightness and shine. Um, whereas this one is PY83 and PR101, and that earth pigment is what's making it more opaque. Um, I mean, it's not bad, but I wouldn't say it's necessarily a direct replacement or an equivalent replacement. It's just, it's different. Then we have Da Vinci Red, which is PR254. It's a really nice, rich, slightly opaque color. It's a really nice sort of mid-red, I would say. And then Perylene Red, PR149. It's a bit warmer. This was the other new colour that was included in the gift trio. Yes, it's definitely a bit warmer, but definitely, but really pretty. Then we have Rose Dory Quinacridone, which is a mixture of PV19 and PR188. PR188 in a lot of brands is usually like a Scarlet Lake, which is quite a warm red. And PV19, well, we all know PV19 can be a variety of different shades. But it's usually quite a pinkish colour or a pinkish violet leaning colour. So that's really lovely. It definitely has a Rose Doré sort of hue to it. But the original Rose Doré pigment, or at least the one that I've tried from Windsor & Newton, is very gummy and not as, doesn't lay down as nicely. So I definitely prefer this version, even though it's a mix. Then we have Permanent Rose Quinacridone, PV19. This is a really nice sort of permanent rose, Quinacridone rose sort of color. Definitely leaning very heavily towards the magenta side of things, which is nice. Makes it a very usable and useful mixing color. Then next up we have Opus Vivid Pink, which is their version of Opera. The tube says PR122, but I'm pretty sure, which is Quinacridone Magenta, but I'm pretty sure there's some optical brightness in there because it's not rated for light vastness, which tells me that they rate it as fairly fugitive. <laughs> Then we have Joyce's Mother Green. This is a mix of PG7, which is a phthalo green, PY42, which is like a yellow ochre or transparent yellow oxide, and a PBR7, which could be a variety of shades, to be honest. Could be anything from a raw sienna to a burnt umber. I'd imagine it's probably more like a raw sienna or burnt sienna type color. A little washed out bit so we can see what it looks like. That's really nice. I really like that. It's a really nice sort of olivey green colour. Showing up a bit dark on camera at the moment, but hopefully on computer it will it will look more accurate. And then we have sea glass, which is a mixture of PB15 colon 4, so that's a type of thalo blue, and PG7, which is thalo green. So again, this is a sort of rich, transparent sort of turquoise colour. It's really pretty. I think sea glass is the perfect name for it. Okay, so that's the first page. I'm going to set this aside and we'll do the last few colours from this set. Okay, we have the last four colours from Da Vinci. Oh, of their watercolours. We have Thalo Turquoise, which is PB16. This was... I think they already had this colour before, but it was included in the gift set. It's a really lovely Thalo Turquoise. Very green-leaning turquoise blue. It's great in, like, a uh, mixing trio as your cyan colour. 
Then we have Prussian blue, PB27. I love a good Prussian blue. I know it's fugitive. I know people have issues with the light fastness with this one, but I just cannot. I, it's just so pretty. It's just such a pretty blue. I can't not have it. And then we have Cobalt Blue, which is PB28. It's funny, it's a colour I'm coming to really enjoy. And I don't have too many variations of this colour, which is why I got this one to try out. It's lovely. I can see some of that granulation starting to come through as well. Cobalt Blue is typically a granulating colour. Then we have Indian Throne Blue, PV60. Again, it's another one I really like. I, I sometimes or often will use this in place of a Ultramarine as a warm blue on my palette. Especially if I want a mixture that's not going to be super granulating, then I like using Indian Throne Blue instead of a Ultramarine in mixes to get that effect. All right, so next up, we're going to try out the gouache. I'm just going to change my brush to something more appropriate. Um, I'm just going to take a slightly damp brush. don't want it to be too wet. I'm going to see how these paint out without too much water at first. It's very thick, the titanium white, which is PW6. And we'll add a bit of water to it. Of course, this is straight from the tube. It's not been mixed on a mixing palette first, which is probably how you would use gouache. You'd mix it up first rather than going straight from the tube onto paper. So, but yeah, that one felt quite nice. And even with a bit of water added to it, it's still going down fairly opaque. bit hard to tell with white on white paper although this paper is off-white so you can kind of see it okay we'll go with the Payne's grey Trying to just get a lighter wash of it, even though it is gouache, just to get a better look at the hue of this paint grey. Probably mix a bit with that white to see how that looks. That's quite nice. Okay, and then finally the Elizabeth Crimson. That's a lovely, pretty colour. I, lo I love a good Elizabeth Crimson. It's really pretty. Take a bit of that, mix that with the white. That's nice. And then take a bit of that and mix it with the Payne's Gray, see how that looks. A rough idea of the colour shade. It's a nice sort of darker maroon type colour. It's not showing up too great on camera. Let's see if I can get that. There we go. Sort of see that a little bit. It's still wet, so it's hard to tell. But I'm going to go change out my water because it's now absolutely filthy with the gouache. And I will be back. Back now. Final lot of page for watercolours today. Next up we have Gamboge, which is PY139. This is my Mary Blue now. This is a really warm yellow, almost an orange, I would say. Definitely on the warmer side of things. I mean, this reminds me a lot of that Soul Shine from um, Da Vinci. It's a very similar 
colour to the soul shine. So yeah, definitely very orange for a, for gamboge. Well, the gamboge does tend to be quite orange, so it's probably not too inaccurate. Then we have sandal red, which is PR254. That looks pretty nice. Similar to the da Vinci red, which is also PR254. That middle of the road sort of red colour. Then we have Hooker's Green, PG17. So PG17 is typically like a chromium oxide colour. And this definitely looks more like a chromium oxide type colour than a Hooker's Green. This doesn't look like any kind of Hooker's Green I've ever seen. So, not sure about the naming on that one. Then we have Cobalt Green, PG26. This looks pretty pretty standard for a cobalt green or more specifically I guess a cobalt green deep which is typically the PG26 colour next up we have ultramarine deep PB29 this looks like your standard ultramarine okay and then finally we have Fiance Blue PB60 this is your Indian Throne, or Indian Throne. Lovely, deep, dark, blue. <laughs> really like that one. Right, so now we have the Roma Schmalls. So, Roma Schmall Azo Yellow, PY128. Give that one a go. That's a lovely bright yellow without being too lemony, which is great because I'm not a fan of lemon yellows. Next up we have Sap Green Light, which is a mixture of PY110 and PG7. That's an interesting colour. It's not anything I would call a sap green but I do like it as a colour so I'm glad I have that one now it's like a light olive green that looks more like a light olive green to me it reminds me a lot of the hue of the Sennelier olive green which I really like which is probably why I like this one so much and then we have Perilin green which is PBK 31 I have Roman Schmall's Perilin green deep which is PBK 32 it's a slightly warmer green shade but I never got the perilin green from them so that's why I wanted to get this one then we have Indian Thrain Blue I think you guys are noticing that I have a love for Indian Thrain Blue and I don't have that many of them so I wanted to get a few to try out that's really pretty look at that And then we have Cobalt Violet Light by Roma Schmall. This is PV49. I normally see Cobalt Violet as PV14. So it should be interesting to see. I've also had some mixed reviews about the Roma Schmall version of this colour. Some people have said it's quite gummy or is hard to re-wet. So doesn't give off as much pigment, etc, etc. But Cobalt Violet tends to be a fairly problematic, shall we say, colour. In that it can be quite hard to formulate. It seems to require a lot of binder and so as a result it can feel quite gummy this one doesn't feel too bad it's definitely a little bit more gummy than like the other colors i've just swatched it definitely feels a bit harder to re-wet but it is naturally a very low tinting strength color so you're never going to get like a super dark color out of it but i mean having said that that's pretty pigmented for a low tinting color just add a bit of water to it see how it granulates but yeah I'm not I'm not mad about that one to be honest so yeah and then we have October 2023 this is like a limited edition release I think or like a special release for October uh, there wasn't any pigment information on the actual pan so I'll have to check on Jackson's later. If I remember, I'll put it on screen. I 
and it's really pretty it's like a really dark rich purplish brown color that's beautiful all right and then finally we have the rosa gallery paints starting with golden brown this is a mixture of PY43 and PBR7. Then we have Cobalt Grey. It's a mix of PR108, it's like a cadmium red, PB28, Cobalt Blue, and PBK7, which is a black. Okay, you can really see that golden brown granulating. I'll show these up close at the end so you can see the granulation on them. Next up we have Azure Green, which is PB15 colon 3, so that's Thalo Blue Green Shade and PG17, which is your Chromium Green Oxide, or Prochromium Oxide Green. And apparently, I seem to just get paint all over myself. That's pretty. All right, then we have Jade Green, cat fluff. This is PB28, PBK7, and PY42. So again, it's a cobalt blue, black, and a yellow ochre. Then we have magenta grey, it's a mix of PR122 and PG17, so that's quinacridone magenta and chromium green oxide or chromium oxide green. It's a really lovely sort of muted pink colour. Right, and last two squeezing at the bottom here. We have Violet Black, which is a mixture of PV19, PVK7, PR108. And last but not least, Maroon Brown, PBR25, which is like a transparent brown and PV23, which is a dioxazine violet. That's pretty. See the granulation in these bottom ones already. That jade green is beautiful. Even that magenta grey is granulating quite nicely. That golden brown is granulated so beautifully. And the cobalt grey. Even the azure green is sort of like splitting into its green and blue parts. But that jade green is beautiful. Just hopping back in here quickly to show you these granulating colours now that they've mostly dried. Uh, I'd say the golden brown, cobalt grey and jade green are the most granulating of the ones that I've got. Uh, uh, the azure green granulates a little bit but it seems to have settled back out. The violet black, maroon brown and magenta grey haven't granulated too too much but I do really like them as colours so I'm not too upset about that. Uh, the cobalt violet light from Roma Schmaltz still a bit wet but it's definitely granulating which is pretty. This is a really nice like I said um, sort of violet leaning brown and I'd say you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of like a hematite or kaput mortium or hematite violet type of colour but without the granulation so if you like those colours or that colour but you don't want it granulating I'd say this is a good um, good bet. Um, but yeah otherwise most of the others are pretty dry. Again 
I'm sticking with what I how I felt about this new gold compared to the original quinacridon gold from I say original I meant the previous version of quinacridon gold from Da Vinci I definitely prefer the previous version to the new one but I'm glad they have a new version uh, available the gouache is drying quite nicely it's still a bit wet in areas but you can see how like in this in the thinner part where it's not been laid on as thickly and it's dried more it's definitely nice and matte and yeah the white has stayed pretty opaque and yeah so overall really happy with the colors and the paints that I got so yeah like I said in the previous video please let me know in the comments down below if there's anything in particular you'd like to see first otherwise thank you for joining me today um apologies again if the audio is a bit funny I will do my best but I can't hear very well right now and uh, yeah hopefully I'll be back with like I said I've still got some pre-recorded um, videos from the colour comparison series I've got four more still to come out I think there's two on earth yellows and two greens coming up so none of the new ones paints that I've shown today are in those videos because they've already been recorded and done unfortunately but uh, but yeah anyway Thank you for joining me. Really appreciate it. And I will see you guys again soon. Take care. Bye.